thank you all for coming to our noon lecture. Um, just a reminder, uh, we do not have a noon lecture next Thursday because we're getting ready for the South Asia conference. So if you haven't um, got that on your radar, get it on your radar, because it's happening at the concourse. So we won't have a talk next Thursday, but we will have one the, the following week. It will be uh, Professor Aki Nori uh, Uesugi from Japan talking about archaeological research in India. So right now we've had, we're, today we're going to be talking about recent archaeological research in Pakistan. And it's very, I'm very happy to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Qasim Malla, who is from Shah Abdul Latif University in Fairpur Sin. He had his PhD from here at Madison in 2000 and um, got his PhD through the Department of Letters and Cultures of Asia, uh, uh, Languages and Cultures of Asia, and uh, did his MA in Anthropology with me in the Department of Anthropology. Um, he has done extensive research and surveys in SIN and uh, finding many, many new sites which relate to everything from the Lower Paleolithic to the Middle Paleolithic to the Upper Paleolithic, and he'll give you a, a one, I said he could put the five, two, uh, two million years of human history in one slide before you get to Lakhanjadaro, which is the most important site being excavated now in Pakistan, near Sakhar. So this is uh, the, the focus that he will be focusing on today. It's a site, uh, uh, um, site called Lakhanjadaro. He'll be talking about new excavations at this urban center. Uh, I also want to thank him for coming to Madison. Uh, he's been wanting to come here for 10 years, but he's been very busy as chair of the Department of uh, Archaeology at Karapur University trying to set up a new program there and, and build it into a really strong research uh, department. And I was there last May. He took me out to the field. I saw some of the sites that they're doing, just really fantastic work. Uh, he also was excavating with me at Harappa in 1986. So I know him since 1986. He's one of the first Pakistani students who came to Harappa to work with us. And I was really happy when he came here to do a PhD. And so please welcome Dr. Kasim Well, I have to say again that I'm really excited and very happy to be here after a uh, long 11 years. Uh, this, this is very great feeling to me. But uh, before saying anything, I would like to thank my professor, Professor Kinair, for providing me uh, this opportunity to come over here after these long years. And uh, I'm also thankful to the office of AIPS in Islamabad, who just processed my documents in uh, uh, very accordingly in, and in timely to get the visas and stuff like that. And I'm also thankful to my own team in Pakistan, who really work uh, hard with me in the hard situation of the summer hearts and uh, in a very hard situations uh, there. So now I will let you know about my, uh, my research in Pakistan. As Professor Kinnair told you that, uh, uh, yes, we have been busy after completing my, uh, my dissertation. Uh, we took a lot of surveys, excursions in and around the areas where our university is located. Our university is located in really rich uh, archaeological resources where hundreds and thousands of sites are located. Majority of them uh, is, is still unexplored. We are still continuing our work there. But at the at moment, we have so many uh, sites ranging from right from Paleolithic to onwards. Uh, the uh, research until now have provided us clues for a continuous uh, chronological sequence right from, right from 2 million years to onward. Now the site that I will discuss is located right here right uh, you will see if you see the uh, geographical setting of this site it has uh, indus plains here the long ra ra uh, baluchistan ranges in the west and the desert in the east there were two rivers flowing in the past indus river and hakra river uh, and the and the lakhinjo daro that i'll be showing you shortly here uh, it, it was located on the Indus River, but had so many sites uh, on the Hakra and nearby to it. There is a very small hilly range called Rodi Hills. That Rodi Hills g provide us very uh, uh, important uh, artifacts uh, ranging from 2 million years back. 
if if you see this uh, this artif uh, these artifacts which are found by the Italian mission in the north of Pakistan at the Puttuhar region, the similar artifacts are found from uh, the nearby Lakin Yudado uh, from the Third Desert. And the very similar, morphologically similar uh, artifacts are found from Ganjpar, Iran. So th this provides us a basic clue that how the culture were started there. Now, now when we surveyed extensively in Rodi Hills, then we had uh, uh, artifacts uh, from the Ashulian period onwards. You see the, the, these Ashulian lower Paleolithic hand axes here. I haven't brought so many artifacts because my focus is on the Lakin uh, which is the urban uh, uh, period site. Uh, and uh, these are the middle Paleolithic uh, hand axes and uh, some pigs uh, associated with the upper Paleolithic. Then comes the Mesolithic, where we have lots of microliths. So many sites we have named in the abbreviation, uh, but you'll see the trapezes, lunates, and so many other microliths, uh, which are associated with the Neolithic and the Chalcolithic as well. We have found this type of objects from other uh, uh, next Codigian period sites, which are 2800 to 2600 BCE. Look at these arrowheads. Well, these arrowheads continually, uh, continuously used when the pottery was also appeared. The pottery, the beads, and the, the, these uh, uh, beads and bangles and other stuff as well. So within this environment, within, within the context of the, these uh, sites, we have uh, Lakhindya Dado site. Now Lakhindya Dado again is located on the Indus River in the Sakhar city which uh, uh, where uh, we have a lot of industrial sites uh, nowadays and it is located uh, uh, on a strategic point from this Lakhan Yudado uh, we can uh, they can get to the Mehargad via Juder Yudado they can get to the, the Harappa via Ganveriwala they can get to the Gujarat there are so many sites crossing through the Mon Yudado is very nearby the Kodiji site is also very close to the Lakhan Yudado site now let me give you the history of its discovery. In 1985, a villager came to us bringing few shirts. At that time, I was a student. Uh, the shirts came to our chair. He looked the, at the shirts and they sent us to visit the site. We went and collected a few more shirts. And he was so happy by informing us that this is a mature Indus period site. After that, we've been focusing on this site. In 1988, when I was in final year, doing my MSc, uh, uh, sewage water drain was digged by any uh, uh, factory area. There, we have uh, so many uh, uh, artifacts, objects, coming from, from the, that drain uh, in a stratigraphic sequence. We collected and, and uh, uh, rescuely documented that drain. And, uh, and find out that there are uh, several mounds. We call them Mound A, B, C, Mound, Mound A cluster, A and B cluster, Mound C. This is not working. Okay. This Mound C and D. It's not working. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, Mound C and D. And from 94 to onwards, we started small excursions. Small because uh, lack of the budget to our department, but still we, we touched to the site and, uh, and started excavating at C mound and D mound. Then in uh, 2006, we got a little more budget and excavated on the top of this uh, mound C. We established several trenches and we had very good results. As we opened 10 centimeters of the surface, we have just this type of material appearing right below the surface. These are just, just a preview of that excretion. And then we started working, exposing the, uh, the remains. As you can see, the, our students are working and busy in the work. Uh, we have good art artifactual repertoire. 
we exposed uh, uh, so many things like uh, the terracotta line here, the platforms here, these parts, the, the three parts it in one big jar. One, second one, and the third smaller one. And uh, then the, these large parts here. The excavation continued. As, as you sh uh, 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 saw in previous slide, the platform, nearby this platform, we have a big large jar, and among this jar, we have a very small part. In, in a moment, you'll see what appearing here is a double drain, some other platforms, and other things. This one is a big jar. A small jar was uh, placed inside it. Uh, some uh, other artifacts, dish on a stand, and uh, some other parts started appearing. After a few days of excavating very slowly, we have very exciting uh, uh, discoveries, like small beads, a seal right, uh, right nearby the, these uh, small beads, a copper arrowhead, uh, some more platforms appeared, uh, and the, these double drains and a single brick line structure appeared. We, we still don't know what that is, because we stopped excavation there, and we didn't continue in this area. Here are some details of the uh, covered drains and the platforms. The similar drains are found from the Mohanjadaro, just to remind you. On the, on the walls that we have found small one, uh, the, the, uh, the small cross marks were frequently appearing. Why did they put on the cross mark on a particular <laughs> walls? We still need to understand those things. And there are few artifacts. Uh, appearing on the surface al uh, along with this copper tablet and miniature parts. We did have some other uh, exciting uh, um, features there, like a dorsal, which indicates that they had, uh, they, there were some uh, living quarters at this is part of the site. And a big jar was placed besides the wall, this wall. First we thought that this is a staircase, but no, um, was very soon after we find out that the wall continues and the, this wall also continues into this trench. So therefore, the, the, uh, this uh, big jar was placed beside it. Why? We need, still need to know. Because uh, I would like to let you know that these uh, are the initial excavations and uh, uh, such type of questions we will answer inshallah in, in our forthcoming uh, excavations. Here are some more uh, uh, findings like uh, figurines, parts, and uh, other stuff. We did have found these round balls and these uh, weights. When we measured, then a good similarity was found out. See, these are 30 gram, 30 gram, and these are 30 gram. This one is also 30 gram, but unfinished. I think th this is the reason that they have discarded. This is not going to be a 30 gram. Uh, this can be lower than they just discarded it, but at least gives a good similarity with these <coughs> balls. And from this excavation, we did find these two seals, uh, this terracotta with inscription and this copper tablet. Very excellent uh, uh, discoveries. And uh, then the, uh, the copper figurine, a similar figurine was found from the Chahunjodaro site and some uh, copper objects, arrowheads, and uh, this color stuff, and the pins. Lots of beads, small micro beads, the other stateite bell type beads, and, uh, and cornelian beads embedded with, uh, with uh, this copper bead. Some bangles, different type of decorated bangles shell bangles right here, uh, lots of small parts, figurines, human figurine, bird figurines, and some potsherds, painted potsherds, of course, and the cones, terracotta cones, shirt blades, the resource of shirt blade, getting the shirt is very close to, the, uh, to the, this side, and some polishers, stone polishers, and grinders. During 2006, we had uh, another uh, uh, important discovery that at uh, at least 2.5 uh, 2 kilometers east of this, these mounds, 
we find out uh, uh, the remains just four meters below the ground, which gave us <coughs> idea that this site must be a large site. This was a turning point to the importance of this site. And we again uh, thought a lot about it and uh, uh, tried to write to the government for the grants to become and uh, grants for the, for the continuous research. We were successful in getting the grant and in 2008 the district government provided us a good amount of 1 million rupees to continue the research and we started excavation. We opened <laughs> these few trenches and again like, like 2006 we have very exciting uh, uh, discoveries. Just below the surface the architecture appeared. This you can see a good architecture of the other parts as we have during 2006. So this was, uh, this was a really uh, a good uh, uh, discoveries, which encouraging us for doing more research. Uh, these are the, our students participated in our excursion who found this, this seal and were very happy to holding in her hand and showing us that what discovery she has made. Uh, some other uh, uh, stratiate inscribed object, which is broken. Figurines, some more figurines, uh, the beads and the copper hammer and weights, some other stuff, including this raw stateite stuff and these uh, um, um, blocks. During uh, this time period, we had another important discovery of the western mounts. Uh, those western mounts again pushed our idea that this is an urban site. And we started hypothesizing that this is fourth large urban site besides uh, Monjodaro, Harappa, and Ganveriwala. The discovery of western mount came through the destruction of this area. Large machines were used to just remove the earth. We rushed there, called the police to stop the work, but uh, perhaps it was too late. Much of the site was already destroyed. As you can see, the, the remains of the walls over here, right here, this is a wall. But this is the area that they removed. This is not only the area, but this is the portion of the area that they already removed. Again, uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Nilo Fershek, uh, who is also uh, a brilliant uh, archaeologist, she rushed over here and uh, visit that uh, destroyed portion of the Lakhinjodaro. As you see, the impressions of the bricks right from here go in, uh, in the waste directions. Uh, they at least uh, digged half a meter down to take out the bricks. Now the dirt, they were the, the uh, villagers were taking the um, uh, bricks, burnt bricks, and the earth as well, to be filled in the in the cities. These are the bricks that that have been digged out from this. The wall went to the west direction, and look at amount of the bricks. We just cut the uh, person who was taking the bricks and placed nearby this excavation. They are still there. From this area, a well appeared. As we cleared a well, that there was a, this large part uh, uh, um, situated in it, and on the, this large part, the, this this bead and a very small uh, part jar was placed. In uh, uh, this area, they built uh, very thick stone walls. Perhaps uh, the situation is almost like Harappa where they have walled enclosures. We need to clear this situation, but these are the indicators which give us that this is very important large urban settlement. From this destroyed portion, during our surface survey, we uh, found this seal and some uh, good parchures. After this discovery, very recently, in 2009 and 10, 
we again got a good amount of budget, at least 2 million rupees. We are so happy to have this amount of budget and we started a very large project. We opened at least uh, 28 trenches and called upon uh, all universities within the Pakistan to participate in our excursion. It was very exciting and a big project. At least to me, I was so happy. We have teams from, uh, from Sindh University, from Punjab University, and from Hazara University. Uh, as I told you, we opened uh, 28 trenches. And uh, like other, other excursions, we, as soon as we opened the ground, we did have architecture. Now, we are not uh, 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 much deeper into the ground, but uh, we went uh, at least two meter in depth. Up to about a uh, meter and a half, what we have situation is, uh, is uh, uh, architectural remains made over the debris and made with the, with the broken bricks with the broken bricks and debris like this one, which doesn't suit to the, to the, to the mature industry standards. Well, but at least this, this thing, uh, this, uh, this layer is with us to understand the situation, what was happening during the last phases of the locking of the door. Uh, this trench is very important to show you that uh, the, the, there are several, uh, several old covered drains as you see the remains of this drain, uh, this drain and this drain, they both were destroyed and this large drain was built. This drain was connected to this platform and this semicircular platform and these two niches. Uh, in a moment, I will show you the details. This, this, these two niches having with this semicircular feature and these two, uh, these bricks, is uh, still strange to us. What was the purpose? In uh, forthcoming seasons, so we will open uh, the, this area to understand what was going on here. Within this trench, we did found these three uh, vases uh, closely um, situ uh, placed here. And besides this vessel, the long bone, uh, this is the detailed uh, photo of this train over here. You can see that how this is turning into the other areas. Besides this trench, very important features were found. There, were, uh, there was a cluster of four uh, platforms, one, two, three, four platforms, measuring two by two meters, uh, uh, having these uh, small rooms besides it. This again is a, a conjecture of uh, architectural disturbance. As you see, the, the, I mean, uh, here's a staircase leading to these platforms, and this was blocked. And uh, below these uh, walls, there are some other walls which were either uh, taken away or destroyed to build these walls up here. You can see that these uh, rooms are again blocked or something. These rooms here are again blocked. Besides this uh, uh, heavy cluster of architecture, a good uh, floor was found, and this was uh, at the depth of uh, two meter. At this depth, we started having a different type of material, a typical industrial period material, Harappan material. It means that uh, the Harappan uh, uh, occupation starts uh, right about two meter below the surface. At this uh, level, we have uh, huts, and this type of uh, the bricks, which indicate some some sort of the architectural feature, and uh, some sort of good uh, walls, intact wall. We also had very strange features. This is one of them. Uh, this is actually a uh, river sand, white sand placed over a crushed uh, burnt bricks. Very thin layer, almost two centimeter thin layer of this uh, uh, white sand from the river. It was covered with, with this mud layer. Again, a small uh, uh, two centimeter layer. 
the uh, this cursed uh, uh, bricks were into this slope position in front of this uh, uh, feature there is a mud uh, kind of uh, feature which again slopes the uh, this white sand uh, feature slopes like this one and mud also slopes like this one so they meet like this one uh, what is this we do not know one of our faculty uh, told us that uh, this type of feature is found from the Mesopotamia, Kafeji, because they were, they were using a river sand to purif for the purification purposes. We still need to understand this strange feature and see if this is a purification and ritual kind of thing. And if, if this occurs frequently, then this is important feature. Then the, uh, uh, if not, then our understanding will be changed in, in, in forthcoming excursions. Besides this, a uh, good discovery, a strange discovery, was a human skull. This human skull was found from the um, debris. It was placed on, on a plate, broken plate. The, break, the plate was, large plate was broken. Perhaps uh, they took uh, just, you know, this head placed on a, on, a, on a plate and it dumped it, thrown it literally, uh, and this is the reason that the plate was broken. But uh, we didn't have anything else associated with this skeleton. It's just the um, debris and, and this uh, skull. From these excretions, we have this brick uh, with this design, like this decoration designs, and a lot of um, other, other stuff, like a copper chisel embedded in the ground. Very exciting cultural material came from this excavation. These are the uh, uh, seals from the previous collection, just to remind you. And these are the seals and tablets from uh, um, present uh, excavation. A similar type of seal, uh, this type of seal was also found from Harappa. Uh, we have not compared these uh, seals and the tablets with uh, other uh, city sites of the Indus, but I'm sure that if we can find or not. A typical discovery came from, a unique discovery came from this site, which is uh, two T-shaped tablets. Very exciting discovery. On one T-shaped tablet, on one side, this symbol was given, and uh, on, uh, on the, at the bottom, the, the Savastika. On the other side, a row of either arrowhead or people leaf and the savastika. Now, this type of uh, seals or t shaped uh, um, tablets were also found from the Mohanjadaro. Then, uh, uh, hypothesis of Kalam came that uh, these uh, tablets may represent uh, the Kalam. Professor Kinayar, he just emphasized on this. Uh, column issue a lot and explained that uh, this was a uh, oldest representation of the column. Now let's see how it was a column and then you can also discuss and uh, uh, give your opinions on this as well. I have ideas for that. Just okay. So this is, this is what we think it's a column like this one. On the and uh, these are these round uh, uh, stone uh, blocks uh, found from uh, Mohanjadaro ringi stones. And uh, similar type of the uh, columns and ringu stones were found from the Dholavira. Uh, some other found were found from zigzag type uh, uh, ringi stone from the Harappa by Professor Kinayar. Here you can see again with this one. Uh, so uh, we thought that uh, this this was uh, th these uh, ring stones were used into the columns because uh, some uh, professor Kinnair also experimented and uh, he thought that uh, th these ring stones were used in the column. Okay, if they were they were the uh, uh, ring stones were used for the column, then the column must be of uh, this dead palm because this, uh, look at the decoration. This is what I think. Uh, look at the decoration, the similar decoration is over here. And uh, one thing is that the Indus people were depicting the nature, nature 
like uh, bulls, like other uh, other fauna flora and their and their uh, potsherds. So it is quite likely that they have uh, this decoration idea from the dead palms. There is another tape, T shaped tablet that also have some signs of this uh, column. Look at this this type of thing, and uh, this may be a column too. Besides these unique discoveries, we have other uh, routine uh, artifacts, including this uh, human figurine and uh, this human figurine in action doing something, some activity. And then <coughs> animal figurine, seated tiger, some bull figurines. Bull is still commonly used in, in, uh, in sin for various purposes. <coughs> Lots of uh, uh, parts and pens, a right, good variety. Uh, some dices, <coughs> like this one. These dices were found from Monjadaro, from uh, uh, Monjadaro again, and from the Harappa. Uh, some more uh, objects from uh, Lakhindadaro, and these are from the Monjadaro too. Other terracotta balls and uh, lime uh, and uh, these hammer stones, uh, some more weights uh, made out of this bandage shirt. I would like to let you know that uh, the, uh, the uh, raw material resource of bandage shirt is very close to the uh, to the Lakhindadaro, into the uh, Rodi Hills, so they could go and uh, pick the uh, uh, pick easily bandage shirt and made, made make these uh, um, uh, weights. There are some more pebbles and uh, and polishers. Lots of beads, of a good variety of the beads. Bangles. Uh, you can note here that this is an imitation of stoneware bangle. The stoneware bangles are very typical to the Monjadaro, but at other sites there was a good imitation of these stoneware bangles. I'm not sure if if these stoneware actual in stoneware bangles are found from Harappa. Okay, then there are two sites, Monjadaro and Harappa, where the stoneware actual in the uh, uh, stoneware bangles are found, but other sites they are imitating uh, some more uh, objects from Lakhindadaro. Good one is this uh, bone polisher and a scraper. Uh, some more beads, along with this big nodule. Uh, at Lakhindadaro, there is a good amount of pottery that contained uh, this type of slip, light cream slip. That light cream slip is given to the uh, Bengals as well. At least uh, 15 to 20 percent of uh, the shirts contain this this type of uh, slip, uh, and uh, sh uh, providing so many uh, decorations uh, by applying this uh, type of slip. So uh, we uh, are of opinion that this may be a local wear. This may be a local uh, painting type of the Lakhindadaro. Let uh, we would like to confirm into the forthcoming excavations, this one too, but uh, we have initiated this idea as well. Some parts should also contain some graffiti marks, which also occur at, uh, at uh, um, many uh, urban period sites, and this was a common practice dur during the urban industries. And there were some uh, non-local objects as well. The buffware pottery from Balochistan and the blackware pottery, uh, this is the same nodule that I showed you. These things indicate that some foreign elements were there. Either the people uh, came to the Lakhindadaro or the Lakhindadaro went there and brought these objects with them. Now, what this, these uh, discoveries suggest us? Suggest us two things again. That is in, in uh, our conclusion at this moment that uh, all the disco uh, discovered features, including architecture, uh, semi-precious stones, uh, and a uh, good amount of seals, indicate that this is one of the large <coughs> urban settlement. And it was among the uh, other urban settlement of Indus, like uh, 
again like Mohanjadaro, uh, Kali, uh, sites in uh, uh, Gujarat like Dholavira and Lothar, Harappa, G Ganverivala, uh, uh, Ganverivala, Rakigadi and Harappa. So uh, we hope to see more in a, in a future and uh, at the end of our excursion we did bury all the trenches to avoid the destruction of the exposed ar ar uh, architectural remains from the Vandals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation. And we have time now for some questions. Uh, so if you have a question, please. Uh, well, I, I just, uh, I was just uh, stupefied and uh, enthusiastic about that, that column because, because, uh, well, you had had uh, uh, compared it with, with uh, Mughal or Afghan uh, model, which is which is um, slightly um, well fruitless because because Mughal and Afghan architecture they come from Syria and Persia. Just, just ask the question, not a lecture. Just oh, okay. The, just the question. Oh, all right. I think that you would, you would, you would find parallels from the, the Buddhist schools of Madura and Gandhara for this typical Indian portico column, because it had, and also in Indian Shastric architecture, you find find exactly similar components as as what you already have in this Mohenjo-daro. Uh, in Sanskrit, of course, but and, and in South Indian architecture, where which is imported from the, the, the north, you find exactly same components, same shape, uh, and I agree that it comes from from palm. That must be the natural uh, predecessor of that kind of color. I, I don't have. Uh, I, I don't have any questions. I just share my ideas about, about this. Okay. Th thank you very much. And this is what we are saying, that these tablets represent the column. Sorry if I, I gave a lecture. They are columns, and I think you, I agree with you. This is uh, yes. the mobile style that he showed. Mm -hmm. is probably not yes. the best example. Yes. Yes. They don't it's have just Nara houses in in, in a sense, so uh, that's why. Just to give you idea that this is a column. But Madura it's and Gandhara and Hindu Kush, okay. the wooden architecture in Hindu Kush presents similar, similar okay. patterns as this column. And, and that's very fascinating that we find it also in Hindu sculpture. Yes, it is. Yep. Um, and, and towards the beginning of your talk, you showed a, a perfect a mark on it. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about how extensive those marks have been and the kind of locations where they've been found? Well, let me go back to that slide. Just, just, that's okay. <coughs> but these marks were, were uh, given to the, to the small uh, wall uh -huh. on one side. At least uh, three uh, bricks contained uh -huh. uh, these X marks in the same row. Now, this is a typical feature that why only three uh, bricks contain this mark. During our uh, n uh, 2009 and 10 excavation, we also found uh, at one or two bricks, but not many of them. Uh, why they have provided these uh, X marks, what they uh, indicate, and why they are not given so frequently, um, these are the questions that we have to understand. Mm -hmm. Mark, are they found in the Rafa? Um, we have some bricks, the, those are those are rectangular bricks, not wedge-shaped, right? No, not wedge-shaped. Yeah, so particular. at Harappa we have wedge-shaped bricks that were all made for one well, and every one of the bricks had the same two marks on it. So when you commission the well, they have to have the right diameter, so they have a form, and all the bricks for one well are made on contract with the same sign, so you don't mix them up. But those are rectangular ones, and we have a few of them, but not very many with the signs on them. So it's a new discovery. Okay. So the question is, why would they put an X on one rectangular brick and not five million more? Mm -hmm. uh, probably because 
they didn't want to waste their time on it. But, uh, these may have just been indicators of batches of bricks being made for somebody or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I think that possibly, you know, it's part of a, uh, a commission of so many bricks being made. And those are made pre-firing or post-firing? Pre-firing. Pre-firing. Okay. So they're made when the clay is wet mm -hmm. and marked and then... Let's see it. Right. And is that the only mark? Is that, that the only mark on them? Yes. Yeah. That's the only mark. Nothing else. Thank you. I was just wondering if there's what's above that layer of bricks, if maybe those were meant to mark like a space um, or some other architectural feature, the guidelines of an architectural feature that came above. See, uh, above these marks were only two courses. It was robbed. And okay. was robbed. So we don't. It's like this wide or something? Uh, you know, uh, it means the 10, 10 brick row. And but then it's a destroy. The it's, I think, uh, as you see, that the, the, uh, there is a brick without mark, mm -hmm. and uh, there is another brick, and then there is a mark, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of alternative kind of thing, mm -hmm. and uh, this gives, I don't know, it's kind of confusing there. Because this is not a regular feature that occurs, and only this. Yeah. Yeah, How about the graffiti marks? Are they, are they merely decorative? Or they are not decorative. They are the graffiti marks. Some of them are in this writing, so yes. there's a whole script written. Mm -hmm. yes. I have a question about the chronolo chronology in terms of... You said that you two meters below, you start getting the core phase Harappa like yes. 3B yes. material. Mm -hmm. Do you have pointed base goblets in the top layers or not? They are mixed with uh, with the debris. They are so mixed with the debris. That would be what we call 3C, so 22,000 to 1900. Yeah. But where do you find late Harappan pottery? You said you found late, late Harappan pottery on the very top layer. On the very top. Yes, uh, very top layer. And uh, the all artifacts uh, and these uh, seals that you saw are again from that mixed debris. They are not uh, from the stratified context, no. But that one seal, the geometric seal, looks like it's a Codigian phase or earlier. Uh, uh, that geometrical seal came from the surface uh, of the west mound. So we cannot determine whether and it came from... Do you have any Codigi pottery at all from... No, not Europe? yet, not yet. We are hoping and expecting that... So uh, no early stuff yet, but you haven't gotten to those layers. No, yet. not yet, so. This would be great if we find some cottage and stuff down there. Really. And so the size now is three kilometers? Yes, three across. square kilometers, yes, across. Mm -hmm. Three square kilometers. We call them the western mounts, eastern mounts, and central mount. Our excavations are on the central mounts nowadays. Yes? Um, I was wondering the local pottery that you showed, uh, how prevalent is that in the assemblage, and how distinct is it from the Harappan Well, see, in, uh, in manufacturing technology, it is a Harappan, but only the slip is different. The, sh the sh vessel shape is the same? Yes, yes, the same. It's Everything the same. is the same. The the same. Just, just the decor uh, decoration is almost parallel bands, wavy, wavy mm -hmm. decorations and stuff like that, but the frequency of this uh, light cream slip itself uh, is uh, uh, just just draws our attention because it appears uh, frequently at least t uh, 10 to 20 percent of the total amount of the shirts. On different vessel forms or specific? No, 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 they are in, in, in general party forms. But all the pottery was being locally made, right? Yes. So most of it? Yes. So, okay, so then this, and we, we do have a lot of the, that cream slip at Harappa. This time? In the, in the last phase, I would okay. say it's about 25% as well. So this is a feature of the late late phase of the rock. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. But it's... Because um, we have just touched the, the actual Harappan phase. Mm -hmm. And if see that how uh, f uh, frequently that uh, slip occurs. If it occurs in abundance, then we think differently. But if it doesn't, then it's again... It's similar, to, it's similar to what we find in the yes. And Mohindra Daro, too. Mohindra Daro also has a lot of that. He also 
then we won't say local there. Yeah. It's just <coughs> it's a yes, Yellowstone. So yes, Yellowstone. Uh -huh. But the next question I have is, how, why do you think Nakanjadaro mm -hmm. is so close to Mohenjadaro? Do you think they were equal size sites? Because you're saying it's three kilometers. That's about as big as Mohenjadaro. So then, how can you have two big cities what? as big as each other? within such a close location? This is a very interesting question and uh, honestly I've been thinking on it and uh, trying to find the facts. Why that many cities are surrounded to the Mohanjadaro? This is uh, not only one large settlement. Mm. How, can I, how can I come to the, my last, uh, last slide please? If you see Mohanjadaro, then uh, uh, Lakhindyadaro is located at about 90 kilometers. Chahujudaro is located in uh, south uh, west, about 150 kilometers, I think. Juderjudaro in northwest, at about 100 and uh, some kilometers. Uh, and uh, uh, the last slide. And the, the last slide, please. The last slide. Very last slide, quickly. So. This one right here. Now here's the Monjadaro and here's the Lakhnadaro. Right here would be Chamjadaro and then Nahuto here. There are so many other sites like Balakot, Aladino, Satkajamjara and so many. They are very small. No, what, the, what the important thing is that Chamjadaro is a good urban site, we know. And Juderjadaro is also a good urban site. And now Lakhnadaro. I just give you a brief contextual look, uh, location of the Lakhindya that uh, in that area, A, the church resource was there and the thousands of workshops are there, a good quality of church which was traded throughout the Indus Valley. B, there are hundreds of sites, both mounted and surface scattered. It means that, the, that there was a, a good amount of movement we can't say a uh, total number that how many people, we cannot just, you know, go into these type of discussion. But looking at the number of the sites, which we've been documenting, is greater. Where the, <laughs> well, see, this is kind of simple too, that I think uh, the location of Lakhindyadaro itself give a good reason for the settlement to grow at an urban level. From it, uh, from this Lakhindyadaro, it was very easy to go to the to the uh, uh, Balochistan Highlands very easily, and from there we can go to the uh, um, Cholistan communities way down to the Harappa, and from there the people can go very easily to the Gujarat via Nahuto and uh, to the coastal areas, and from there the people can go to the south. Uh, uh, western uh, uh, settlement of Balochistan and the coastal area towards the Gulf of Oman. So looking at the strategic location of the Lakhindu we, uh, I, I think in future this will be clear that uh, why this settlement grow at urban level. And uh, this is the reason, I think. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.